Hey yo, what's going on guys? It's Michael Reed here. Welcome back to another tour review by yours truly. So today I thought that since I'm bored and I don't really feel like recording any gameplay, any anything gameplay wise, um, until later this afternoon, I thought that today we would do another tour review on some collectible stuff. So, as the title suggests, today we are going to be looking at another one of Takara Tomy's great, successful franchises. Um, and, 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 and it's pretty much around the same vein as the Beyblades that I've reviewed. This is going to be a review on a toy line that I've gone into fairly recently, and I love it. This is called Crossfight Beatemon, is what it's called. So, uh, let me quickly explain what a Beatemon is before I actually bring out the toys and we do reviews of all of them. And also, I'm doing. Also, if you noticed, I'm doing a recording out on my window. Uh, my window still kind of stand today. So, um, you guys didn't really get any comments last time saying that you guys didn't want me to do any more of, of this. So I'm just gonna be recording this again because, like, uh, because you know what, the great outdoors, you know. So. It's, it's, it's a nice thing to break up from just lights and toys in the background and darkness. So anyway, so um, Beatemon has a really complicated history. Beatemon started as originally a, tie to a toy tie-in with the Bomberman uh, games. If you guys know uh, anything about Bomberman. Um, so if you don't know what Bomberman is, look it up. Uh, it's, one of the, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of classic arcade kind of game. So... Um, so it started off as a, as a tie-in with that, but then later it evolved into its own franchise with its own unique characters and own story. So, and you'll quickly see as I get the toys out, you're going to quickly see the connection here between Beatemon and Beyblade. And as a matter of fact, they even had a couple crossovers at one point, um, releases and stuff like that, which I don't have because obviously they're rare and expensive. So let me get out the first one that we're going to be looking at today. Our first guy is going to be the main protagonists. Um, Beatemon, which I cannot bother to translate their names because it's Japanese. So, um, although I do have the, I obviously do know the names of the toys because English. But anyway, English translations. But today we're going to start off with this guy. This is Excel Dracion. So, Dracion is the main protagonist, Beatemon, as you guys can see. Um, actually, I don't think you guys can really see him at all, can you? Hang on. I think the lighting's a bit off. I think that's why. I think because the lighting. Yeah, because you guys, I can't see it on my own camcorder. So I think it's because the light is just, that sunlight is brutal. Ooh. Yeah, it's killing the light differencing there. Um, so I might just close my window. Maybe that'll help. Maybe just a little bit. Ah, much better. Okay, so. Excel Dracion, here he is. So, um, he's one of the four legendary dragon beat him on, which... Um, it's pretty cool. And he is obviously a blue dragon, as you guys can no doubt tell. As you can see, he definitely looks like a, kind of like a Gundam-esque character with the eyes and the visor and the, and the whole, like, helmet kind of thing. So, basically, the whole gimmick behind these is that these are all little marble shooters that each have different gimmicks to them. And each one has a different type. There's power, rapid fire, and I believe there's also, uh, what's it called? Endurance type, I think is what it is, or it's like stamina type or something. I don't remember. Anyway, oh, it's accuracy or something type. I forget what it's called. But anyway, it will probably come to me as I as I go along. And if I do forget, I'll just look it up because I haven't, I haven't, I haven't got a new beat em on in a long time. As there's a bunch I've been meaning to buy on eBay because that's why I got all of these is off of eBay. So basically, how these guys work is you have a core, right? You have your arms, you have your headpiece, and you have your foot parts. So, um, Excel Dracion's gimmick is that, as you guys can see in his core, there is a black piece in there. You may be wondering, what is that black piece? Well, that is rubber, and that is what causes the marble inside to spin in a forward orientation. So it's whirring up. Like, you know how Sonic, like, rolls into a ball and he kind of, like, accelerates on the ground? That's kind of like what this marble does. It will roll forward on the ground and increase its speed dramatically. So... Uh, let me just pop off the back part, because most some of these earlier ones did come with, like, back pieces to cover up the heads, which do look nice, by the way, on the back. I'm actually put it back on so you guys can see what it looks like, so you guys can see. Now, you wouldn't think this would be a marble shooter if you're looking at it from the back, but it is if you shake it around and, and start to notice things on here. So, as you can see, as we push it from here, as you guys will see, it will fire. And now I just went behind my windowsill. <laughs> okay, so I have to go grab the marble. Ah, back here. There we go. 
So there you go. So that is Excel Dracion. Now each of them, and now not all of them look the same, obviously, but this is the main one. And uh, there are upgrades for these as well as um, these as, as they're being marble shooters they do have upgrades you can get like magazines to put on the back you can get like rubber stands you could put on the bottom of the foot parts to make them like more stiff on the ground and uh, you can also get like other rubber st stuff you could stick on there and as you can see the stickers have worn down over the years because of how long I've had this and actually used it so that is Excel Dross I'm going to put them off to the side Next up, we're going to grab his other counterpart, or a rapid fire type one that kind of serves like a rival or something to it, but at the same time, is another one of the sacred dragon beat em on. This is Rev Dravice, or known in the English as Lightning Dravice. I like Rev Dravice better. So, uh, Rev Dravice, as you can see, is based on a dragon again, but is now a white dragon. So, and this one is a rapid fire type. So basically this one's designed to shoot a lot of marbles off at a single time. Basically functioning like a Gatling gun. It's basically supposed to shoot off the marbles really, really fast. That's his whole gimmick. So, and as you can see, definitely a different design on this guy. Um, nice and white. He has some rollers on his feet, which you guys can see. He does have rollers. So you can roll him side to side when you're actually trying to play the game. Because uh, the whole point of this uh, beat em on, which I should have explained this earlier, is basically you have different games you can get, like different, or as they call them, events in the, in the, in, in the Japanese. And um, you shoot the marbles at targets and you try to like knock them down. And, and, and you try to compete to see who can knock down the most targets first. That's kind of the idea behind these. So, oh, and also in the Japanese animated tar cartoon, they have like they have avatars like Beyblade does, where like they have like a dragon avatar, and there's like um, there's different types of bestial avatar kind of things. So it's all very cool um, kind of thing. Also, my stickers keep coming off. Jeez, I really need to super glue these stickers on because good god, these stickers do not stay anymore. So I'm gonna have to super glue them on so that way they don't come off. But anyway, so. Excel Dracion and, and um, I mean, not Excel Dracion, um, Lightning Dravice. Sorry, I'm mixing it up because I was looking at him and then looking at, at this one at the same time. <laughs> and it didn't turn out too well um, in the naming scheme of things. But anyway, very nice design. And as you can see, these things are also very sticker heavy. Something else has to probably I did. Something else I should probably mention, uh, sorry, my dad's on the back, uh, out of frame. Um, basically, another thing I should probably mention is that these all come as model kits, so basically you have to, like, build them up kind of thing and stickerize them up and all that, so. Um, and again, this one does fire. Um, you just remove the back part of the head, and then you can fire it. Now, this one, as you can see, does have... Uh, rollers on the inside. I've got to mention that there are rollers so that's supposed to help with launching the marbles out really, really fast. So I'm going to quickly fire it real quick, as you can see. So it does work. And later on in the video, I'll show you guys how this whole rapid fire thing works and just how crazy it gets because this thing can shoot marbles very, very fast. So there is lightning device. So the next one up is another one of the dragon. Um, beat him on as well. The only one I'm missing is called Smash Dragold, and that one is so awesome, but it's so expensive. That thing costs like a hundred bucks on eBay. I'm like, there's no way I'm paying that kind of money. And I have no idea why it's so expensive anyway. Well, that's probably because it comes in a big old box set and it has all these gimmicks and stuff like that. That's probably why. But if I can find it for cheap somewhere, I will definitely get some Astra Gold at some point. So, but other than that, I pretty much have all the Dragon beat em on. So, this one is called Round Drazeros. Now, actually, this is supposed to come with a different core originally. When this was originally released, this, is, this was released with what was called a Twin Core, which was a core that could shoot two marbles at once. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy, pretty broken. So, this one has... Uh, also, George Camelo, welcome to the stream. <laughs> Got to mention that, sorry. I'm getting sidetracked because I'm too busy trying to explain what I'm, what's going on here. So, this one is actually a reissue with a new core and with new parts. So, originally, this came in black and purple, although this one comes in a nice silver and has these nice dragon decals on it, if you guys can see, but it has, like, these nice dragon printing on it, which looks really cool. So, the round core here, which we have on this particular version, is basically supposed to shoot more accurate 
it's supposed to, more, it's supposed to shoot more accurately. So if you try to aim at like a small target, this should be able to shoot it more, uh, more accurately and more precisely, as you will see as we turn it behind and we shoot it. So does shoot and also the round core does also have this nice little extension to the thumb trigger um, so that way you can like more accurately kind of like shoot it down so you can kind of like get it more accurate so um, and you also may be wondering what these wings do and why there are these big gaping holes these holes serve a purpose so if you have extra marbles you can store them in the wings and then using your thumb which is kind of difficult actually you can push out the. Um, I have to use a trigger of another beat em on to actually get this out. Um, you can actually you can put the marbles in there and then pop them out, which is like I said, easier said than done. So let me just get this trigger out. There we go. Okay. Put you off to the side again, and the wings can fold as well, so you can adjust the wings, and you can actually use the wings as a way of holding the beat em on. So you can like place them behind like this. You can kind of like shoot them while grabbing at the wings. So, um, very, very cool one here. So that is, that is round Drazeros. Next up, we have his evolution, which I actually got as a, this is the only limited edition kind of rare one I have next to another one, which I'm going to show later in the video, um, which is this guy. This is Stream Drazeros. Now, this was released as part of a later wave of Beatamon known as the Emblem Charge Beatamon. Now, you may be wondering, what exactly do you mean by Emblem Charge? Well, you see these emblems on the wings here. You see these, em these emblems that have, like, these dragons on them? These serve a purpose, as these will be placed on the arm parts, as you can see, and will help to increase its shooting. So, basically, it's supposed to make it more powerful and have way more stronger shots than your typical um, shots would be with this Drazeros. So, and he does have several gimmicks in this, in, on this one. And this one also did come second hand and also didn't have all the stickers on the sticker sheet. So some of the stickers are actually missing. But of course, I can always buy them online if I can find them for cheap or if I can just find a regular release of Stream Drazeros and then just slap the stickers on and then take the stickers off there and slap it on this one. So, uh, anyway, so Stream Drazeros, you can see, um, right there. So what we can do with the wings. So let me show you what you can do with the wings. And also this one does have uh, the same gimmick as the twin core would have in the original Drazeros where you can shoot two marbles at once again. So I'll actually get a marble from this one and I'll pop it into the back of stream Drazeros. So as you can see, it does hold two marbles. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera, but there are two uh, marbles in the back, which I should also have mentioned earlier. Again, really sorry about this. The uh, the the balls in this are called bidama. That's what they're called um, in the Japanese. That's what the marbles that are named bidama. So you press it and it will shoot two marbles. Which oh geez, it has some power behind that. Not as po much power as to say if I had put on the emblem charge, which I'll show you guys how you do that in a second. But first, we're gonna show you the wings. The wings have several gimmicks. So the wings, first of all, have these cups. So you can open up the emblems and you can store marbles in the wings, just like twin Drazeros, or in this case, round Drazeros. Um, but except they're way more easier to actually get out, as actually there is a piece of plastic on the back of these emblems. So when you open it, the marble will actually kind of pop out a little bit easier which is very, very nice. I'm glad that you don't need to use like a, like a pin or like another, or like what I did, use another Bidamon's trigger to push through the slot to get the marble out or the Bidama out. So uh, the wings can also be adjusted. So you can move them down to have more of like a, a stabilized shot, or you can have them up for the more like, it's so that we can have a better grip, but you may be a little bit more wibbly and you might not be as accurate with your shots with this one. So as I said, the wings do pop off, like so. So they just pop right off. And you can place them on the arm parts. And now this will make for the emblem charge mode. So what you do is basically the idea is you slot your fingers through these holes right here, your point of fingers. And you take your thumbs and you put them back here. And then when you shoot, it will push on two pieces of plastic, which will push on to the hold parts inside, which again, also have rollers for increased speed. And you can fire um, a more powerful shot. 
I'm not going to do it here on camera because I'm probably going to hurt my fingers. Either that and the marble's going to go flying somewhere and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose it. But you guys get the idea. So that is Stream Drazeros. Very, very cool evolution. And for a comparison, we're going to bring in Round Drazeros. So you can see the differences between the two. So see, less spiky, spiky. Less spiky, spiky. Way bigger wings, smaller wings. Bigger wings, smaller wings. You guys get the idea. So there is Stream Drazeros back there. So, and she is, I believe, a, he's also, he is a special type of beat -em on That's another secret kind of type they have, is what's called the special type, um, which basically is a reference to the fact that he can shoot two marbles at once, even though his original release, I believe, was a power type, if I remember correctly. Either that or, what was it? Or was it a, no, no, it was a power type, I believe. I don't remember. Off the top of my head at the moment, I can always look it up if I need to. But anyway, so the next of the dragon beat -em on here is this guy. This guy is known as, uh, what is his name? Force Dragron. Yes, Force Dragron. Dragron is definitely different from the bunch in the fact that he is a red dragon, and he has, obviously, the Force Core on him. So the Force Core, as you can see, has these big, giant yellow spikes coming out the chest, which are supposed to help with accuracy and with power, as this guy, again, is a power type, I believe. So, um, basically, this one's supposed to have more power behind it. So, um, as you will see as I push the trigger to fire it, we, it has definitely some oomph behind it on those hold parts. So, the gimmick with this one, because uh, this one has several gimmicks, actually. First gimmick being these wing parts. As you can see, as I just showed right now, these do come off. And you can twist them and reinstall them onto the arm parts of Dragron. And when you reinstall these, these will make for a stabilized mode. Where basically these wings act as stabilizers and make it so that you have more stable shots. So that way you don't have too much recoil on your shots uh, during, a, during a battle. Um, also the horn. The horn can act as a sight. So basically if you look behind it, as you can see, the horn can act as a sight. So you can more accurately aim and then shoot at your target. Which is very, very cool. I do like that. Um, also, you may, be noticed, you may have noticed just now that there are some interesting looking parts on here. You've got these little pegs, you've got like, and uh, you've got like this little slot on top of the head. You may be wondering, what's going on with this guy? Um, if you guess that this guy has a combination gimmick with another beat em on, which I'll show later in the video, you are correct. This guy does have a combination gimmick. So he can combine with another beat em on to form a sort of like a crazy combination mode, which I will show in a second. Um, so let me, I'll just grab him out just because. Um, so let me just grab him real quick. So that way you can get this combination out of the way. So this guy combines with this one. This one is known as Round Tiger. Now, Tiger obviously is a tiger, pretty obvious. Um, again, one of these earlier beat em on designs, except this one, does, oddly enough, does not have a back piece. Which, I should also mention that this one doesn't have a back piece either. This is one of the later ones where it doesn't have the back piece. So this one uh, does have uh, these little rubber pieces on its arms, which you guys can see orange parts, rubber, uh, which allows for the, again, for the combination gimmick on these. So this one, again, as I demonstrated with the round core on round Drezros, does the same thing, basically just a different color as the initial release. And also you may have noticed, I don't know if you may have noticed, but uh, one of the uh, bolts parts, the bolt parts on the feet, which by the way, that's what these are called, bolt parts, these little plastic pieces that hold the parts together. Um, this one has a blue one on its foot instead of a gold one because this one does have a bad case of gold plastic syndrome Which if you don't know what that is basically th basically that means that the bolts are very fragile and can easily break and One of my bolt parts did happen to break so I did have to use another spare bolt part to put that on there Doesn't look as nice, but of course if you're not looking at it from the right angle You'll pretty much not really notice it. So now let's get on to the combination gimmick with um, Force Dragon. So let me get uh, quickly get a tool and I will demonstrate that. So to start the combination, we're gonna start off with Tiger here. So we pop off his head, 
we pop off this top part, which that will become a new site. We remove the head pieces. These will become stabilizers for the marble to kind of more accurately get it to shoot uh, forward. These arms will come off and become stabilizers or like extensions to the feet, which these, which thankfully the bolts on these ones aren't as tight as the ones on the feet, as those ones really make me worry whenever I do this. And that's pretty much it for Tiger. So you kind of just left with this weird kind of guy over here. And then we go back to Dragrin. So Dragrin, what you do is you take the head part we got off of Tiger, put it on the top, on the slot. This will become a sight, as I said. That's a sight. These will go on to the sides of the core to make for stabilizers like this, they kind of just friction slot their way inside. Ugh, they are kind of tight, so hang on a second, let me just push these in a little bit more. Ugh. Okay, got it, so there you go. And then you take the arm parts and you put them down again to increase surface area of the bottom and to act as stabilizers. And then you could take the bolt parts, which they don't actually recommend you do this necessarily, but you can if you want to. Um, if you're a little bit rough with these, then you can just take the bolt parts and you can just bolt them in using the tool, using the triangular tool, and it's kind of hard for me to do this on camera. Okay, did I get it? Yep, I got it. Okay. And then lastly, we take the arm parts, and there are slots, as you can see, on there, little slots, that will line up with slots on the feet, right there, right there. That's where it will line up, and then they will connect to the feet. So we just slot those in, and we have the ultimate force dragon, as this is called. So now this thing has these front parts here, which again help with stabilization of the marble, so that way it doesn't move too much when it's being shot. This part acts as an even better sight, so you can more accurately line it up with the horn with your target to shoot. And... Um, Let's see, and the foot parts here with the rubber help again for greater stabilization, so you can more accurately shoot, even though for some reason the arms on mine aren't exactly as stable as they on others, but still it does work. Um, so that is the combination form of Dragrin. Now again, you can take them easily apart by just taking basically everything that we just put on and basically taking them back off again. And then we can just replace them back on Tiger. And then we can recomplete him again. So, definitely do like that combination gimmick. Again, I don't, this is never shown in the show. It's mostly just for the toy line and just to give you another reason to buy Dragon. Uh, besides for, you know, completionist's sake. Um, but still, he's a really cool beat, beat him on. I definitely do like that, just like Beyblade, where it has combination gimmicks, these toys do the same thing is that they managed to fit combination gimmicks into these. Which you will see this more with another f with, an, with another release later in the Emblem Charge system, which I will show you, known as Triple Delusion. Now, he has a really complicated combination gimmick, but it still looks really cool. And as a matter of fact, the beat -em on can turn from two characters into three characters. I will, I will show you that in a second, so definitely stay tuned if you guys want to see Triple Delusion. Because he is quite the interesting character. So, and it's a combination of two unlikely characters that will fuse into one. And it is a really complicated gimmick. So definitely stay tuned and bear with me because we will be getting to him fairly, fairly shortly as I'm saving him for last because he is probably the coolest one of the bunch. So also I just realized I just put the bolts back on to Dragon. Like I shouldn't have, I should put them back on the Tiger. Silly, okay. So put these back in, retighten it with the, with the tool. Okay, got it. Okay, the next one, just take it off. Ah, jeez, it's falling all over the place. All right, come on, come on, get on there. Yep, put it in and tighten it like that. Okay, so that is those two. Now, next one. Next one here is actually gonna be a recolor per se, 
but it's still worth mentioning here. This came in the same set as this guy back here, round uh, Drazeros. This is this one is called Strike Dragon. So basically, this has what's called the Strike Core. So basically, this one, basically, the whole gimmick behind it is that it has a really, really long trigger. And basically, it adds for even more power when you push it. And it has like a little cup in, on the inside of the trigger, as you guys can see, that helps with gripping the ball and shooting it forward. So a very, very cool one. So, and this one does have the same gimmick where you can combine it with Tiger and you can adjust the arm parts, which I'm not gonna show here again, but I do love the sticker decals on this guy. As you guys can see, look at that horn. Look at those blood kind of flame details on this. Looks really cool. Now something else I forgot to mention that also works here on Dragon is that you can remove his horn. Now this is again, this is a combination feature for, um, what is it? Uh, Smash Drag Gold, which I do not have. Uh, because, as I said, very expensive to get right now, um, and still is, even after so many years of these being around. Um, basically, um, yeah, that's basically the whole thing with, with the legendary dragon being on it can all combine into one giant super dragon thing, which is, again, pretty cool. So, but again, do not have drag gold, but it is something to note that the horn does come off. So the next one we have here, which the name my mom always jokes about whenever I reference this guy. This guy, his, his name is Stroke Orochi. Now before you guys start making jokes, <laughs> the I'm, I'm going to call this one by its English name for now on, for the rest of the video, Strike, Strike, uh, what was it called, Strike Cobra? No, I'm just going to call it Strike Orochi, just because Stroke sounds kind of wrong. So anyway, I'm just going to call it Strike for the rest of the video, just so that uh, I don't get people complaining that I made that uh, basically it's a sucker for dirty jokes but anyway so strike Orochi here um he is based obviously on a snake so pretty cool oh what's going on Luca Malba welcome to the stream so um anyways back to what I was saying so he is a snake um and he is a, a he is a accuracy type beat him on based uh, basically his again his whole point is to basically be super accurate um, he does have a back piece to him, which can be removed. And, of course, he does fire with this unique trigger on the strike core, or stroke core in the Japanese. So, strike uh, here, What basically what you do is basically this whole back piece is supposed to keep the trigger from moving. Which basically helps, again, with accuracies, you can shoot f um, a more accurately at a target. And also, another gimmick this guy has is that he has these little stabilizer feet, which, as you can see, push out on sliders, as you guys can see. They do slide out. And these will, again, increase the surface area and help you to more accurately sh land a shot on a target. So, very, very cool one. So that is Stroke slash Strike Orochi Cobra. Anyway. So, um, and to answer your question real quick before I get to the next beat -em on no, I do not collect battle beat -em on Sadly, I don't. Um, mostly just because I think, first of all, they're rare, second of all, they're expensive, and plus, these were the ones I thought looked better, in my opinion. And plus, were cheaper and easier on my wallet. <laughs> so, next one here is another limited edition. This is the Gold um, Edition Force Leosia. So, Leosia is obviously a lion, as you guys can no doubt tell. He is very, very shiny. Now, something that's interesting is that out of the box, this guy came with a weird silver spot on his head, which I do not like. But other than that, the rest of him is pure gold, and he's awesome. I forget how you originally got this guy, but I got him, obviously, secondhand. And um, he is pretty cool. So, the first course is basically the same thing as on um, Force Dragon. Same thing. Um, so, um, basically the only difference with this one is that it's Leosia, different colors, and yeah. So, not really much to talk about this guy, but still, pretty cool one. Oh, and also, he's one of the first beat -em on that I have in my collection to have this little extension to the trigger, which I do like, so you can have more accurate shots with it. So, do like that. Um, or the original release of this actually came in the form of Spin Leosia, which I still have yet to find. 
uh, mostly because most of the purchases I've seen were either fakes or it was just this guy just with a different just with the Force Leosia sticker on it or a picture so basically the whole gimmick of that one was that came with the spin core which basically allowed the ball to spin uh, like a Beyblade allowing it to hit t multiple targets at once which was pretty pretty cool so that is Force Leosia limited edition next up this one's pretty interesting as uh, he has this auto loading kind of feature I'll explain it in a second this one is called um, loading dials so dials obviously is based on a crocodile or alligator so very nice details on him and um, he has the loading core the loading core has two features one is it is a accuracy type I believe or whatever it was called back in the whatever, whatever it's called on so uh, basically it has more accuracy so you can shoot it like so but something else you can do is that during a beat -em on battle, you can actually load him through this back part in his, well, <clears throat> I guess we'll say backside? We're just going to say backside. So basically what you do is you take a marble, and basically you can slam him on top of it, which I'm going to show right here. And it allows you to reload it back into the core. So which is a really, really cool gimmick and especially helpful during battles, uh, especially during tense ones where you have to use like speed and, and, and accuracy. Because with this loading feature, it actually forced um, Takara Tomi to extend the core to allow it to have, to allow it to, you know, to, to use this gimmick uh, effectively. So very, very cool one. I do dig this quite a lot. As, as I love that gimmick. The fact you can just, during a battle, you can just slam them on top of a marble or a badama and then just shoot it out really quick. I definitely dig that. And because of that extended, um, extended core, it acts similar to a barrel um, like extension, which, of course, my Vietnamon fans will know what I'm talking about. Because um, uh, basically there were barrels that were released that you could snap on the front to basically increase your accuracy. You don't really need that necessarily with dials because he kind of already has a barrel. So you can shoot him super accurately because of the whole loading gimmick. So I do dig that. This next one here was one of my first beat -em on I actually ordered when I was getting into this franchise. And I just love this guy to death. This one is known as Drift Jacker or Drift Jakku in the Japanese. So, Drift Jakku does have this really cool gimmick to him, which I will show you guys in a second, or at least, you know, like, tell you about. I'm not actually going to do it right now, because first of all, the desk is getting cluttered in two, and I want to lose the Bidama. So, the gimmick with this one is that there's a rubber drag strip on the inside of the core, and the core of this can rotate left and right, which is the whole point of the drift gimmick. So basically what you do is you would aim this, twist the dial here, and it would make the marble drift left or right. So you could uh, theoretically go around objects and hit a target. So say there's a target and there's a big wall in your way. Well, with Drift Jakku, you could theoretically drift it around the target, go behind the wall, and hit the target, which is kind of a cool gimmick. Although it doesn't really work all that well because, um, the, first of all, the marble is obviously very smooth, so it's very, very hard to do. And even when it does do it, it kind of loosely does it. So, but it's still a cool novelty none, nonetheless. And another gimmick with this guy is that he also has this other mode which you can use with his foot parts. So as you can see, Drift Jacker's foot parts, which Jakku is based off of, uh, which is based from the words Ku Jakku, which is a Japanese word for peacock. So that's where the Jakku part of his name comes from. And that's why he looks like a peacock, obviously. So basically what you can do with the foot parts is you can take them off. And you can rotate them a full 180 degrees and will basically allow for the drift gimmick to really come into action. So you take the foot parts off. And as you can see, the foot parts are incredibly massive. So just absolutely huge. So love that about this guy. Now I'm going to put those darn bolt parts off right here. Okay, so you put the bolt parts back on. And now we should have this new drift gimmick on here. This is the drift mode, I believe is what this is called. It looks absolutely ridiculous, and I'm not even going to lie to you. 
looks absolutely ridiculous. I mean, look at that. The feet are on the back, and it has his tail sticking out the front. <laughs> but now you have this. So you can stand him up like this. You can load the marbles in from the back. And this is where the real power of the drift mode comes in. So now this little tail part on the back acts as like a groove to allow the marble to more accurately shoot out and to more accurately hit targets, uh, theoretically. So, yeah. Definitely do like that gimmick. Oh, it's as ridiculous as it looks. Because I will admit to you, it does look pretty stupid. But I love it because it's just so stupid. So, this is another reason why I love Japanese stuff. Because they're just so over the top with some of their products. It's insane. And also, because of that foot gimmick, obviously the drift core is definitely a lot bigger. And yes. Um, something else I should probably preface is that yes... These are customizable, so you can change the cores and stuff like that. Now, something else I probably should have prefaced earlier is on the back, there are these things. You may be wondering, what the heck is this thing? This thing is known as a power block. Power block basically acts as a safety feature, so that way kids can't shoot themselves and hurt themselves with the beat -em on So, basically what it does is when you place it on the ground, this part will go up behind and will actually go behind these little plastic hold parts to increase their power to its full potential but when it's off the ground this part drops and dramatically reduces the power so that's why that's there the power blocks it's for safety so that way kids can't hurt themselves and also um let me quickly answer your questions here luca let's see do i know any more beat em on youtubers that still upload I do not, although I do know that a guy by the name Ike's Rollout Ike's, like IX Rollout IX, or Rollout Reviews, as his name, as he's known as now, um, he does some really awesome beat em up reviews. So definitely check him out, as he's done way more content than I have. This is literally my first video I'm ever doing on beat em on, because I'm pretty much out of ideas of what to do for tour reviews these days, especially now with the whole quarantine. So, also yes, theoretically, exactly, Luca. I'm glad that. Oh, so thank you for coming to the stream, by the way. As it's definitely a pleasure to have uh, my first beat -em on fan here on the channel. Unless there's someone else out here that's a beat -em on fan, it just isn't present at the moment. So the next couple are, are again part of the Emblem Charge series, but we're going to review them anyway, because collection review. Next one here is called Slot Beetle. This was this was my second purchase I got with my first lot of Beetlemon, which if you wonder my first Beetlemon I purchased, there were Slot Beetle. Um, I also got, um, what was it? What was the other emblem charge? Um, I got, I think I got, yeah, I got Slot Beetle and I think I got Excel Dracion and I believe I also got, um, who was it? Force Dragon, I believe is my first ones. No, it was Drift Jacker. Yeah, it was Excel, Dracion, Slot Beetle, and Drift Jacker. Those were my first three I got. Then the other ones came later. So, anyway, Slot Beetle, very cool. He is obviously based on a bee or hornet. So, um, again, another one of these accuracy kind of type beat em on. Now, you will notice that there are some stickers missing on this one. Like, there's supposed to be white stickers on the horns or bee stingers here. And, again, because he's emblem charge, he has these emblems on the side. Which, as you can see, look like little bees um, on there. You can see its wing and then its head and then it's kind of stinger as it's cocked to sting at whatever's coming at it, which I do like. And it does have two emblems because something that I should mention before I get into my last one um, uh, very, very soon is that some of these um, emblem charge beat -em on only have one emblem on the side of their arms, which is absolutely stupid because not only does it horribly affect accuracy, but also, it just makes it just really awkward to use the emblem charge. That's why I'm glad most of them came with the two emblems that they should have on each side of the arms. So, Slot Beetle, his whole gimmick, again, is similar to Stroke Orochi um, in the fact that he has um, these little, this, this little back part. Which, again, acts similar to the Stroke Core in the fact that it's supposed to make it more accurate and is supposed to make this have less wobble. Also, the front part here acts as a sight. As you can see, little honeycombs, you can aim it at your target and then shoot at the target. Now, again, this does have the emblem charges. So basically how these work is basically you hold it and then you press and hold the emblems and then you can fire at your target. So that's the whole gimmick with that. 
So that is Slot Beetle. Very cool one. And I definitely like him because as a kid, I loved insects. I love bugs to this day. I'm still a really, uh, I still really like insects, bugs, and all kinds of creepy crawlies. So Slot Beetle was right on my alley, so I had to get him when I saw the listing on eBay. So that's another really cool one. Next one up is another one of the Emblem Charge series beat them on here. This one is called Gunlock Wolg. Now, that is probably the most hardcore name I've heard in any toy line ever. Right next to, uh, let's see, um, what is it? Um, uh, what's another cool name? Twin Nemesis. <laughs> uh, no, 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 not Twin Nemesis. That's not very cool. Diablo Nemesis. Yeah, that sounds really hardcore. There we go. From Beyblade. So... Anyway, back to beat him on here. Gunlock Wolg is obviously based off of a wolf. He does have some stickers missing as well. He has some eye stickers that aren't there. Um, he's supposed to have these little, um, I believe he has some, what is it? What is it? Uh, I, think that's, I think that's actually it in terms of stickers missing. Other than that, he's pretty much like 100% here. So he has these little moons on his shoulders. And his whole gimmick, again, he has emblem charges, which the emblems do have little wolf heads on them. Very, very cool. And his whole gimmick is with the gunlock core, which I, for one, absolutely hate this core. Let me explain. So the whole point of this core, let me take the marble out, is you're supposed to press on this part of the core. There's this little tailpiece um, on here, and you're supposed to put your thumb there, and sort of like a weird gun kind of thing you kind of push on the trigger and you kind of like fire him like this it's really really weird so more times than not in a battle i mostly set my finger under this trigger and then shoot it like a normal beat on because heck with this core it sucks i hate it and the emblem charge is so weird on this one because the emblems flop around um, in a weird way, so when you emblem charge it, it kind of wants to more move these up than actually keep them in place. It's just, I don't, I don't, I don't really like this one, so. Gunlock Wolg, nice idea, but horribly executed concept. And oh my god, that one is terrible. We don't talk about Gunlock Wolg because he absolutely sucks. He is so bad, he's so atrocious. Oh my god, he's just so terrible. Anyway, next one that's kind of interesting is this guy. Again, kind of getting cluttered here, but I'm just going to try to move everybody else out of the way a little bit. And this is, um, what's this guy's name? Uh, Burst Bison. Yeah, Burst Bison. So Burst Bison is obviously based on a bison or bull. So um, he has these horns on his head. He has these like hooves and his fiery kind of decals to him, which look really cool. Now, the whole point of the burst core here um, is that you're basically supposed to put your thumbs back here. And unlike most cores have springs, this one has no spring. So basically, you can push as hard as you want and have some really awesome power with this guy. So that's the whole point of the burst core. And also, it's another one of these beat em on to have these extensions to the trigger. So, definitely do like it. And another gimmick he has, he also has a stabilizer mode. Or a full horn mode, as it's called in the Japanese. You take his horns off, like so, which are slotted in via friction. And you slot these onto little slots on the arms. Basically making him look similar to a praying mantis. So you guys will see once I put these on. Because actually getting these on for mine is actually quite difficult. But, there you go. As you can see, we got this weird praying mantis bison looking thing going on. Basically, this is supposed to add stabilization because these are supposed to increase the surface area, allowing it to shoot really hard um, now. And it's supposed to have a little bit more um, friction on there. So definitely do like Burst Bison. He's definitely fun. So, And again, his stickers on mine are peeling off. I hate the stickers on these on these sometimes because the stickers do not like to stay. Everyone hates the everyone hates the gunlock core. Well, I'm glad Luca that you're not that I'm not the only one who hates it. <laughs> My favorite for burst bison, amazing rapid fire and power. Oh yes, he's a power rapid fire type, right? Yes, yes. I forgot about that. Yes, he's a power rapid fire type. Definitely love him. He's great. Okay, now for my last two, technically last three, if you count the fusion mode, which I'm going to show in a second. So, these two here are very, very special. 
These are specialty type beat em on. This is triple gelusion. Now let me get these re rest of these guys out of the way real quick because we're gonna need as much space as we need to show off this guy because this guy, it, 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 this guy demands a, a, a heavy presence. So let's give him the room he deserves. So let me get everybody else back on my shelf here off screen. And I will show you guys this, this really awesome beat on because again, he's another one that has a combination gimmick. And his is way, way cooler because it turns from one character or two into three characters. Which again, I will demonstrate that in just a moment. So please excuse me whilst I get everybody else out of the way. So that way we can better take a look at these guys. Because again, we really do need some space here. Because, oh God, we're running out of space. So, let me just get everybody back. Everybody go back. Good show. There you go. Out of boys. All right. Everybody back. Everybody back. Everybody back to your places. Come on. Do it. All right. You go right there. You go right here. You go right there. And you go over here. Okay. Now that everyone's out of the way, we take a better look at these guys without clutter. So we'll start off with um, with this one. This one is one of the two. This is called Wright Drake. So Wright Drake here has this gimmick where um, where basically he can be shot with your right hand. Um, so and he's obviously a dragon. So you guys can see, very cool dragon de details. Now I'll explain this big clunky piece in a second, but basically the whole gimmick with this, as again, this is another, this is one of the first beat em on to have this really weird emblem here. So as you can see, it only has one emblem on the arm, which you can see does have a dragon aesthetic. And essentially what you can do is you can fire it like any other beat em on, so you can shoot it. So it does have another extension part on it. Now I actually have two marbles in here uh, because my the other set that I have that has Drazeros and the and the um, what's it the Dragon, um, uh, like the recolors slash remolds re-releases whatever um, had an extra marble, so I just put it in here. So um, yeah, actually no. That's not where this comes from. This actually comes from the set because the set actually has three marbles. I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, heat's getting to my brain right now. So definitely have to end this video fast before I melt and turn into a pile of goo. So anyways, so right Drake, very, very cool dragon beat him on. Next up is the left counterpart, which actually has some naming issues here. On the box, this is called Left Starion, but in the actual show, it's called Left Stallion. So, it's, it, it, but Takara Tomy, I believe, did come out and say that, there, that this, that this beat on is called Left Stallion. It was just a translation error between uh, developers and stuff among the team of beat on So, basically translation error there, essentially. So again, has the weird clunky piece here, and he is based off of a Pegasus or horse. So, and again, he does have a emblem on the side, which does have a horse head, and a very very cool. Um, it has a very very cool gimmick as well with this one, where you can take the the mane of stallion and you can actually move it up here. Now this allows you to actually place in a magazine or you can also use this as a sight to better aim with Stallion. But either way, very very cool gimmick. Now, now on to the main event. So as I said, these two can combine, which I'm going to show you guys right now. So to start, you take off these big arm pieces, which will become the third of Jalusion, because Jalusion, the combined form, is based off of a Quillen or a Kirin, which was a combination of a dragon and a giraffe. So, I will explain that all of that in a moment. So let me get all the marbles out of these guys because the marbles are going to be quite a problem doing this combination. So let me just get those out of the way. If this one would actually come out, okay, there we go. I'm just going to place these off to the side. So, the, so that's what we do first: is take off those pieces, and we can check out the. Then we can take off these parts, the feet. 
Let me quickly answer this one comment. If you can go check out Splash West or, F or Fenrir the Dark Wolk. Okay, I'll definitely check them out. Are they beat them on YouTubers? I'll definitely check them out. So, okay, so take off the foot parts, right? Yeah, take off the foot parts. And then the next part you do is you take off these arm pieces. So you see, there's a lot of disassembly with these guys. So take that off. Next off, you take off the helms. So you take off the Drake helm and you take off the Stallion helm. And then lastly, you take off the visors. <sighs> this is really very easier said than done. And then you're left with these two. Now what do you do with these two? These two, what you do is you take these parts and you snap the arms down on these little friction parts. And now we're going to form the third of the, of the combination. So we're going to get these two out of the way for a moment. And we're going to now deal with these parts. So first off, we'll form the trigger. So what you do is you take this part in here. You pull out a trigger. Now, uh, this part on the back, which actually, I forgot to take this part off. You have to take this part off of Drake. Sorry about that. Then you take these two pieces and you slot them together on slots here, like so. And then also with this, with the helm of, of Stallion, you actually have to take these parts off. And you have to take this part off. Forgot to mention that. Sorry. I haven't done this combination in a while. And then you take this part and your little holes here that will tab into slots on the back. Like so. And there you have formed the combined mode trigger. Next, we're going to move on to these two parts. These two parts will combine to form a um, to form the third uh, beat em on of, of the of the triple delusion uh, combined form, which we will do right now. So you take these two halves, stick them together like so, and also something I forgot to mention is you have to combine the foot parts as well. So you have to take the foot parts here, these parts on the bottom, take them off, because it's much easier to do it without that. And then you take these parts and combine them together, like that. Then you can take these halves and stick them together. Take the combined foot part, stick it on the bottom, like that. And then you take this bottom part, which will become the power block, and you want to combine those together, which I did not do that correctly, so excuse me. because the trigger actually got wedged between where the trigger slot should go, which is not what I want. So yeah, as I said, take these parts right here, which are separate, and you just peg them together to form the power block of the third guy. And then you can just recombine the foot parts and just stick them back onto the pegs. If I can just, eh, okay. Then what we do is then we can, oh, what's going on, Pedro Legendary Blader? Welcome to the, welcome to the live stream. Thank you for tuning in. Um, also, I don't know if you, uh, also I probably should mention this earlier, but this is a family friendly channel, so please no language here. I cannot get to my PC right now to put in the rules, but basically the rules are simple. No lang no bad language, any of that. Other than that, you're pretty much fine to be here. And thank you for tuning into the stream. So, as you can see, this part does, also uh, I just showed it off, I didn't really explain it. Basically you take this, that bottom plastic piece that was on Stallion, yeah Stallion, I, I, I keep wanting to call him Starion. I'm, I'm silly. You put that on there and then you can slot the trigger into the back. Now for this next part, I actually like to put these parts in together. So we take the right Drake and we stick him on there, like that. Eh, okay. So then we take this part and we stick it on. And then we just tap it into the bottom foot part. Stick it onto the arms. Oof. Okay, there we go. Now it can get out to the next part without too many issues. So now to form the new helmet, what you have to do is take this part, take the back part of Stallion's helmet, stick it onto the head. And then we take these parts and we slot them into the mustache beard thing to make it even larger for the, and to make it look more like a quillin, like that. And then um, before we could put that on, we take the two visors and we stick them onto the sides of the heads, which is on camera very, very difficult to do. That's why I'm trying to, that's why I'm doing these mostly off camera because it's really hard for me to do these on camera. But there you go, so they have the visors combined. And then you put this top part on there like that. 
And the next thing you gotta do is you gotta take these uh, the stallion foot parts, which I actually forgot to do, and you actually put those on the arm parts of both stallion and drake. So this is actually gonna be quite more difficult now because I'm actually gonna have to take them apart again. <sighs> okay, I made a oopsie, forgot, but it's fine. It's easy to take them apart. So as I was as I was saying, you take the foot parts here. There's a spot on the back, and you basically peg it into the arms of both Stallion and Drake, and those will tab in to their relative sides of Jalusian. So I do apologize for that. I definitely did forget about that, and I hate the fact that I forgot about that because now I have to take them all apart again, somewhat, to put it back in. Ah, oh, God. And this is really nice and tight, which I do like the fact that it is so tightly put together, but at the same time, it's a pain if you mess this guy up, so. Also, to answer that question, Luca, my, my day is, my day is going good. <laughs> How how Kamen Bro can recharge this thing so what? I'm confused. But let's see. It's ridiculous to reach what? I'm very confused. <laughs> I am very, very confused. Okay, so basically we take these parts again, stab them together. Okay, come on. Uh okay, this is this is not going right. Okay, come on. Yep, yep, there we go. Okay, now just tab and just tab everything together. Okay. Tie everything together. Bam, there we go. I was messing with around with it. I got it. Now, they'll let you work with both foot parts on this, although the, the anime version has it with the foot parts being the Drake ones. And then finally, after doing all that mess, we finally could put on the trigger on the back of each of all three of the triggers. So we just tab these all together. Come on. Okay, yeah, there we go. All right, got it. And then finally, after what feels like a million different steps, you finally have Triple Jalusion. Oh, that took a stupid long while. But yeah, that's why you see that I don't have these guys combined very often because good God, doing this combination mode is a pain in the butt. But after all those steps, you finally get Triple Jalusion. So basically the whole gimmick with this guy is that, well, obviously in competitive mode, if you're going, well, in competitive games, he is super illegal because obviously three marbles being shot at once. So very, very cool uh, gimmick with that. As you can see, he is now three characters. These two, and now Jalusian. So, and he is the main bad guy, obviously, of the anime. So as you can see, you can slot three marbles into each of the three cores, and then all at once, you can shoot them all at once if you want. Which, as you can see, is pretty broken. So you can shoot all three marbles. And obviously competitive, this is super, super, super illegal. And, um, of course, in casual play, and also in casual play, it's super unfair. Other than that, I mean, as a gimmick, it's really, really cool. I really like Jalusian. Probably my, probably my personal favorite of these of these beat em on that I have. So, with that being said, that has pretty much been a that pretty much wraps up my entire collection of beat em on. If you guys did like today's video, please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn your notifications on. And I will see you guys in my next video this afternoon. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had a good day. Later, Reed Squad. Have a good one.